Hello, this is Scott Cook, and I've got myself a new Kerbal Space Program mod. Yes, we've got the Interstellar mod on this one. This adds some interesting new power management and power transmission options for the game, as well as some interesting engines and theoretical technologies. Uh, I'm going to kind of do a bit of a tutorial on it, because I was looking around for it, and the documentation is kind of weak. <laughs> I haven't found a... I found, like, wikis and stuff, but no real tutorials. But this is what i figured out so far. Now, this mod... It's generally about power distribution as well as dealing with waste heat and uh, I found some really interesting things that I hope that I can show you that you can then use to uh, sort of work on your own projects now this first vehicle that we're launching here is actually a nuclear reactor that I'm putting into space and it's a big one it generates a lot of power and that hexagonal dish on the top is actually a microwave transmitter receiver I can use it to both receive and transmit power as well as it acts as it can be used to act as a relay. Now, you may be asking, why would I need a relay for this? Well, the idea is I'm using microwave rays to transmit power across my cosmos. What this means is I can send electricity to any one of my vehicles in space. Now, with this uh, microwave ray, we have a lot of interesting ways of taking advantage of it. There's certain engines that take advantage of the heats. There's certain engines that take advantage of electricity and you can get some very powerful, some very interesting technologies. Now, a lot of this, this per first vehicle I'm launching conventionally, and I've still got a lot of mods in this program, like I'm using uh, Keythane, I've got KW Rocketry, I've got B9, as well as a few others, but I'll get into those more as we go here, and I'll leave a list in the YouTube comments. Now, as soon as this stage is done, you're actually going to see a new type of engine. This is a fusion engine. Basically launches pellets of drillium or tritium, out and then explodes them behind it. Now this is a theoretical engine. It uh, takes 2.5 gigawatts of consistent power, constant power, in order for it to operate. But what makes it very interesting is that its ISP is very, it varies depending upon your throttle. If you have low throttle, it is actually very, very high I ISP. If you uh, raise the throttle, the ISP goes down. So it's variable rate, but that it also generates a ridiculous amount of thrust. That engine can get up to uh, 1,100 kilonewtons of thrust at full throttle, but at low throttle it can generate incredibly high ISP. Anyway, uh, it does still require liquid fuel, the same kind of fuel you use as in the turbofans and the regular engines. There's no oxidizer for it, or it doesn't need oxidizer, I should say. And um, it also the engine itself also comes with uh, a supply of tritium and trillium that it can use for its. Uh, for its own use. Now you can add, there is canisters within the mod that add even more if you need it. So that's great. Uh, this is a very powerful engine for moving heavy, heavy loads around the cosmos. It's very useful for that. Alright, so right now I'm just circularizing its orbit a bit here because I want to get this up. Now, what I'm doing is this power, or this uh, vehicle will be transmitting power across the galaxy for me. It's, uh, it's based on the 3.57 meter nuclear reactor which can generate I think it's nine gigawatts of power and now that's thermal power that's heat actually there's also an electrical generator attached to it that is actually what converts it to uh, to electricity which is megawatts in the game Heat is measured in megajoules electricity is measured me measured in megawatts now you may notice those large orange panels those are actually heat radiators Part of this mod is managing heat. As you can see, the, pe the radiators are perpendicular to the sun there so that their wide angles are not facing it and they can radiate heat. They kind of work the opposite of solar panels. Now, the efficiency of your reactor is dependent upon how well you manage the heat. So, it's actually an interesting situation where the heat of your reactor minus the efficiency of your generator leaves you with certain amounts of waste heat that you have to dissipate. Now, you can get better efficiency out of your generators by keeping your panels cooler because the generators require you to have at least some heat dissipation in order to function otherwise the generator just will not generate electricity now I just deployed the microwave transmitter on the front of the last one and we'll get a little bit more into that the next thing we're putting into space is another panel on a satellite basically all this satellite does is going to be a relay now as you can see here there's megajoules and there's uh, megawatts are empty on this but as soon as that satellite came into range line of sight 
I was suddenly able to get power and it starts generating waste heat too. I just did that to kind of show you how it works. Now this satellite will go into orbit. I'm actually going to make my relay system about 750 kilometers in an orbit around the planet. This should give me sufficient coverage with three satellites to get line of sight to wherever we're going. And uh, you'll see more of that later in the video. If anyone's ever played with remote tech, it's similar to that in terms of line of sight. Uh, your transmitter doesn't have to be oriented in any certain way, but your receivers do. The receivers have to be pointed at a transmitter in order to receive power. But what does that mean? That means that we need a satellite network that can beam the power and then reflect it around to the far side of the planet so that you can uh, take advantage of it anywhere. Otherwise, you can only take advantage of the power it's transmitting when it's got a direct line of sight. I'll show you how to do that with the end of the video here. So we're just going to get this probe up there. It's going to take a few minutes. Again, you kind of want to get your probe system. Like In order to get full coverage around the planet, you can do it with three probes. You need, it, you need to get them so that each probe can see each other at any given point in their orbit. And I'll show you a finish on how to do this. Now, that's and we'll you know, I'll get more into it as we go here. But uh this is going to take me a little bit of tweaking to get this orbit in approximately where I want it because I also want to make sure my orbital periods for my satellites match that way the distance between them doesn't decay. And that's too bad that this was launched during the night, but uh, it was kind of a necessity. And the reason for it again is timing. Now you can see the second probe is still see is behind it, more or less in a trajectory. And yes, my inclination right there sucked, so I will fix that as we go. But um, that's not so big a deal. So, for example, here I turn on the receiver, nothing, until you face the towards the other thing, and now all of a sudden it gets power again, and then you face it away, and stops. Now. I will show you some of the applications. I won't get into that this video. I'm trying to keep this video reasonably short so it's not too terribly long. And um, basically by the end of it I'll have a relay network set up in as close to ideal as I can get it. That's pretty much all I can do for this. And then after that I can show you how to take advantage of some of the electric engines that come with this mod. And you can beam power around. Most of the um, devices in this mod require a lot of power in order to function properly and that's kind of by design it, it's an interesting I gotta give the mod maker a lot of credit he added a lot of interesting complexity to it that you know kind of revitalized Kerbal Space Program for me a bit too here and if any of you guys were watching my first videos my long-term space program that was about key thing and that was kind of the mod I built everything else around this new series, or if this is going to go into a full series, is going to be about the Interstellar mod. Because that, I just find, adds a lot of fun dynamics to it. Now, as you can see here, my satellite that's behind it's actually closer to a 90 degrees, which means I missed <laughs> in a way. So I have to do some orbital adjustments, because I need it to see... Like, if you're looking at one probe, the next probe should be about 120 degrees around the circle from it. So that, again, you get a line of sight constantly and here I just turned it on to a relay and now I've run it in the Sun so you can kind of take a look at it and see what it looks like now back to the generator again checking it out it can see the it can see it it's still transmitting power but again I've got to do some orbital tweaking this is probably the most finicky, finicky part of it all I find but uh, once you get this sorted out the rest of it is just a lot of fun so for this next part, it's a lot of orbital maneuvers, just trying to get everything lined up to where it is. Now the interest, now again, just kind of playing around with this new technology, the fusion engine that's on the back of the generator's probe requires, I think, 2.5 gigawatts of power constantly, as long as it's on. Otherwise, it shuts itself off. The nuclear power plant that I have on it is more than capable of providing that. I think it's actually, with its efficiency, it's transmitting or it's providing just over four gigawatts of power. Now, the thing is though, if I'm transmitting that power, then the engine can't run. <laughs> if I'm, the engine's running, I can't transmit that power. So it's kind of an interesting, so I gotta get the thing positioned just right to transmit. Fixing some, you know, orbital inclinations and stuff like that, moving it around. As you can see here, I've got some of the information now. I'm actually focused on the nuclear, gener uh, nuclear uh, power plant there. Again, Right now it's running on uranium. You can also get thorium for it. 
and uh, it produces a waste product called actinides and this waste product is just stored in the reactor until you actually can deal with it. it time it will require maintenance. There's a science lab part that you put into the uh, that's in this mod that will can use to actually reprocess those uh, actinides back into a usable fuel and some waste and some additional waste products that you can then just get rid of. We'll get more into that as this series goes on. For now, let's just focus on getting the microwave relays uh, up. Now, again, I kind of got my inclination sorted out here, but uh, then I have to launch my last probe here right away, where I can act so I can basically create the last part of my network. So this is the last probe that's going to go up with this, and once I get all the uh, orbital inclinations correct, it should be able to give me 24 hour coverage over my planet of microwave radiation yay so I can basically microwave anything down on the surface why do we need a James Bond reference here or something <laughs> anyway with this then so we will complete the relays or complete the network so that I can then take advantage of all the power that's up there now I'll talk a little bit more about some parts because this is a pretty standard launch you've got your nuclear power plants which are heavy because of the shielding. They generate lots of power over long periods of time, but overall with the reactors that you have available to you in this game, it, they also generate the lowest power, the lowest heat energy, I should say. The next step up is uh, fusion, which has an interesting ability, uh, interesting thing, like they all consume fuel of some sorts and they all come with their own fuel supply. But fusion is interesting because it needs a jump start to run the reaction, and then it needs to consume a portion of the power it produces in order to maintain that reaction. So if you lose power, your reactor shuts off basically. Can be a problem on a long journey, especially if you have no way of jump starting it. And then the last uh, generator or uh, power plant reactor that you can get is an antimatter one. And it uses antimatter for fuel. And it's actually probably the most straightforward of them all. It just consumes antimatter to generate power. But you can't start with antimatter. You actually have to collect antimatter before you can take advantage of it. And I'll get more into the collection of antimatter in the next video because there's two ways to do it. You can either manufacture it in space or you can collect it from from radiation belts around the planet, also known as the Van Allen belts around Earth. They, uh, they're basically scoops that you can put on certain spacecraft that will collect them. And we'll get more into that later. There's also a new antenna called a, a dual technique magnometer that will help you find large portions of antimatter that you can then collect and harvest. So now we got probe number three up. Looks like I just have a lot of orbital maneuvers right now to do to get it set up to where I want it. Plus I've got some pretty nasty inclinations I gotta deal with. I've got the uh, flight engineer mod here on the right hand side of the screen kinda giving you an idea of the numbers. I use that to fly with a lot these days. I don't have Mac Jeb installed in this one, which is the autopilot mod that I was using in my last series. Uh, mostly because, I don't know, it was cool, but a lot of the community doesn't seem to like Mac Jeb as quote-unquote cheating. So I'll try to fly without it for now. I may install it again later if I find that it saves me a lot of time, but we'll see. So right now I'm just uh, setting up the probe to get back on an inclination, deal with the... Uh, with the um, the different angles. It's not absolutely necessary that you get set up, but anyway, after all of my th my setups were done, this is what you should end up with. You've got a probes at approximately 120 degrees apart in the circular orbit around the planet. Uh, right now I've got two relays and one generator. This basic setup should provide me with 24 hours or basically power regardless of where they are. Now bouncing it through the relays obviously is going to be a little less efficient, but uh, at least you know it's still available, at least until I get some other um, products up in the, or other power sources up in the sky to transmit around. And again, as you can see here, you can just kind of select the uh, relay itself. Now it's not going to show you anything that's actually going through it until you actually have something that's receiving power. So transmitting and relaying is kind of deceptive and I found this out the hard way. You've got to actually have something receiving in order to show it up and I will show you how to confirm everything's working. Basically, 
if you can receive with any of those probes from any of the other two, you're in good shape. It'll work. But anyway, this is a test I did just to kind of prove to it. Now, this black cylinder is a thermo collector. And I think I put a nuclear engine on here. Uh, now, that's the nuclear engine, the 1.25 uh, thermal nuclear engine that you can get. Uh, it does require fuel, but the thing about it is it can consume a few different kinds of fuel, but we'll get more into that later as well. And this um, dish that I'm putting on the top is actually a electrical receiver. It receives electrical power, so megawatts, whereas the dark cylinder at the bottom that's kind of glowing red receives heat energy. Now, the only modification you didn't see is I put some radiators on this because I realized I forgot before I started recording again. But it needs a radiator. But as you can see here, as soon as you open them up, they're getting signals bounced from my orbital satellites to receive it. And you can kind of see the cylinder at the bottom turning red, meaning that it's getting hotter, which is kind of cool. Now, I've left the engine open here so you can get an idea of how to use it. Basically, the thrust versus the specific impulse on this engine deals directly with how much power it can receive. The bigger cylinders obviously get more power. Now, those black cylinders on the bottom that, that develop thermal, that harness the thermal energy from the, uh, the um, satellite system, can then transfer that back into usable heat, as you can see here. The usable heat is then used to power the rocket and or the thermal nuclear rocket engine. Um, those need to be attached to a heat source in order to function the thermal rockets. We'll get more into that a little bit later as we start building ships. But as you can see here, as I go to do my gravity turn, the amount of power it gets depends greatly upon how much surface area is actually focused on the incoming power. Now these thermal rockets, if the reactor was attached directly to it, wouldn't have this problem. But the whole setup here that I'm launching takes, I mean, it's incredibly light. Like the whole, short of the fuel tank, is lighter than a th uh, nuclear Minerva engine from the uh, Kerbal Vanilla game. And as you can see here, I'm getting pretty much into orbit on one small tank of fuel. It's fairly efficient, and you can get even more efficiency out of them as we go here. And these, these parts also are kind of neat because they also have visual cues, like the black cylinder on the back will turn redder the hotter it gets. And if for some reason the dish closes, that means that it's probably overheated and shut down, or it's not receiving electrical power. This is, again, this is just something I did to end the video off to show you guys kind of what you can do with this network. We'll get more into it, but you can see when I was selecting it too, it tells you how many relays it went through or where it's getting its power from. Stuff of that nature. So as we just finish up the orbital flight here, I'm going to kind of move over the um, probe around a little bit here so you can see just how the change of direction can affect it. And we'll get more into that later. Next episode, I'm also going to get into a little bit more antimatter production. Won't be able to take advantage of it right away because you do have to collect a fair bit of it. And it's kind of a slow process to either manufacture or to collect it. But uh, yeah, so as you can see here, uh, just rotating the probe around you can see how the when the surface area is facing the reactors how much better the power gets so if you build yourself a robust relay then you know you'll always get power although you still have some tweaking to do but for the most part i hope you enjoyed this video i hope this helps you can use this if you want to get the interstellar mod because it is actually really cool and i'd like to see it supported anyway that's uh, me scott cook calling it a day here and you guys have yourselves a good time and enjoy ksp later